Okay, so once we're done with that, you should have our first uh, somewhat of three layers solid, partly. Uh, we're pretty much going to do a second F2L right here, in which this acts as the first layer, or the yeah, first layer here, and we're going to, the first two layers, and we're going to do F2L for these, uh, for these pairs right here. So, just like normal F2L, looks like we already have, oh wait, sorry, wrong way. Um, we want to pick a color other than our top color. We just want to find any corner piece without this on it. So that should be pretty easy. So we'll just pick this one. Uh, red, purple, and blue. So we'll line it up. And take note of what your your bottom color is, which is red. So we can see that it, we have red on top here, so we're going to have to do a certain case or F2L. So our piece is right here. We'll bring it out. And for this F2L kind, we line these up here. Hide them, bring the red facing up over, and insert them. And there's our first left 2 pair for that. Uh, another one here is pink, yellow, blue. And for pink, yellow, blue, here's the other piece right here. Our bottom color is... N oh, wait. No, sorry. This goes right here. Um, we need to bring this over here, the edge piece. Bottom color is blue, and we have an easy F2L case here. Okay, um, this one is, these are actually already, this is in incorrectly oriented, that's purple, and this is not oriented at all, so we're just going to do, you know, how to do F2L very well. This is on the top, the, the, our bottom color is on the top, so we line these up, hide it, line them up, insert it. Um, after this, we have a pair that's somewhat already in place. Bottom color is purple. Once again, the height thing, we seem to be having that a lot. Um, and last one is right here. Purple. Easy case. Okay, so now we have the first several layers solved. Uh, we sort of did two F2L parts. And now it's time for our basically OLL and PLL. Um, so in this case, I have the lowest level case you can possibly have. On the Rubik's Cube, this is equivalent to having a, just a dot when you're on your OLL. Um, you can also have two little spiky things, uh, or three, sorry, three spiky things. Two right here and one right here, or you can have the whole thing solved. But luckily we're in this case. So if we hold this anywhere, um, if we just do F, R, U, R prime, U prime, F prime, just like on a 3x3, three three, you can see we get this thing that I was talking about. This is equivalent to our L thing. Um, or actually, I think this is the line. So if we hold this like this with two dots and um, basically facing this way, if we do F, R, U, R prime, U prime, F prime, you can see all of them line up. Now, if you have the three dots, or the three, um, just hold them up like this, and then do the algorithm twice, and you should be good. So, um, now that we have all these lined up, the next step is to uh, correctly orient our edges. Now, also, along with the thing we just did, after, I'll tell you, it's a little trick. Um, so, basically, we, we have one lined up here, but none no, else are lined up. What you want to do is do U-turns or U-prime turns until you have two of them line up. In this case, I have two right here. Now, you sometimes won't get two at all. Sometimes you'll have only one line up. Now, if that's the case, I'll tell you in a second. But if you have two of them right next to each other, like this, hold it so that uh, the one, this one on the right is facing you, and we're going to want to figure out if we're going to do anti-soon or soon. So, if we look at the way these need to be oriented, we can see that it needs to go uh, clockwise. And to do a clockwise edge rotation, we need to do anti-soon. So the algorithm is, um, I'm not sure if it's the same one I taught you, but it is um, R U2, R prime, U prime, R U prime, R prime. Okay? And as you can see, that will line all of them up. Now, um, sometimes you get a case where you need to go counterclockwise and just do soon. R U 
r prime u r u three r prime. The reason you do u three is because five turns equals one full rotation. Um, now, if you have if you have a different case here where where you have one line up, and but you have you have two of them, but they're not next to each other, they're not adjacent. Um, just hold any one of these facing you and do this algorithm until you have two of them or all of them lined up. The same thing if you only have one aligned, you will do this algorithm with any position. Uh, or actually, do it with do it with the one facing you. Okay, so r u two r prime u prime r u prime r prime and what that will do is nothing at first but do it again now we have two next to each other and we can proceed to doing whichever algorithm we need to do and sometimes it will all line up on its own for you so yep that's how you do that and now for the uh, second to last step this is where we need to orient our corners so first off we want to look for any oriented corners already which we have none. Okay, so this is where we're going to new, learn a new algorithm, and that algorithm will help us rotate the corners. So you're going to want to hold it with uh, one of these lines where they intersect, facing you. Um, or sorry, no, sorry, one of the one of the faces facing you, and well, the two in the back right here are not going to move, but these will rotate this way. So you can kind of eye it and figure out which way you need to do it. So, oh, sorry. Um, the algorithm is r prime u l u prime r u l prime u prime, and that's it. And that will rotate it this way. Now it's kind of a nice little pattern. So because we just have to, it just seems like a pattern that is easy to catch on to. So now we have one of these lined up, we actually have two lined up. So if we ever have two lined up, we know that we can hide them in the back and get these in the front to align. So if we do the algorithm a few more times until they line up, they're all lined up now, okay? So at this point, the secret I was going to tell you was, if you mess around long enough, you can figure out which OLL algorithms go with this. Of course they can't have like a little R or anything because you can't do a little R but you can still experiment with that. But for example you could do the symmetrical cross and could possibly solve it. In this case you can't. But if you have a solve Megaminx you do some of those algorithms you can see okay if I have this exact case after everything's permuted right I can do this and it will solve itself instead of doing this long step. So just like on the 3x3 beginner method we're going to do an algorithm that will solve all these and finish the key, finish the me megamix. So hold it like this, so that this, so that you can do the r prime u prime r u, and we're just going to do that a whole bunch of times. So, okay, sorry, it's r prime d prime r d. So we're going to go r prime d prime r d, r prime d prime r d, r prime d prime r d, r prime d prime r. D. Make sure you do that D, and then you're going to rotate it for the next pair. R prime D prime R D. Make sure you do that D, and you're going to keep doing this till all of your pairs are aligned. Here. Last one. R prime U prime R D. R prime U prime. Finish the mega mix. So. I hope that helped. Uh, I did my best to explain it, and I'm trying a new camera angle out. Um, I know it's on my keyboard because I don't really have any desk space, but uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If not, um, thanks for watching, and thumbs up if you like, and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.